All right, guys, welcome back to the Franklin Forge. Uh, in today's episode, we are going to be using the new lathe. Now, I've used the lathe in the past, but it was a little mini lathe, um, and it was very, very limited. The gears inside are plastic. Um, I've not actually used a full-size lathe before, um, other than a test piece that you see chucked up here, which may actually become the piece that we're going to do. So. What we're gonna be doing in today's project is not forging related. I did think about doing this forging, but since I had just acquired this lathe, I figured it'd be a great opportunity for me to learn the lathe and for you guys to maybe learn something on maybe what to do or not to do. I, I don't know, it could go either way. So what we're gonna make is probably one of the simplest projects you can probably do, which is why I'm doing it, because I'm, I understand how these machines work and I know what all these knobs and stuff do but I am no machinist. Um, so this is the shift knob um, off of my 92 Toyota pickup. It's kind of a restored 92 Toyota pickup. This, this is actually, the, the original one is lost. So the person I purchased the truck from, um, they uh, replaced the actual shifter uh, knob with uh, one of the um, four wheel drive knobs. So when you look in the truck, the truck does have four wheel drive. There's two knobs and they're the same. So. The shifter knob, I always thought it would be cool, but I've not had a lathe that was powerful and big enough um, to actually turn down what, um, you know, something, you know, out of uh, like brass, which is what we're gonna be using. So um, I've got the the um, the shifter knob here. I, my original plan was, I thought I was gonna be able to pull the plug out of here. And then I got to kind of researching on these and these apparently aren't produced anymore. And because I was gonna cut this up, but they go for like a ridiculous amount on eBay. So probably what I'm gonna do is not destroy this and probably put it up on eBay after um, this video is, is done. So what I'm gonna be using is a piece of brass and we're gonna just turn on a very simple shifter knob, maybe put some aging on it, um, may go back later on and make a better one or even use my CNC to uh, engrave the shift pattern on there. But for now, this is just gonna cover some of the, the basics of um, making a shift knob. Let's get a good piece of brass because that's what we're gonna use and let's get started. Okay, so we've got our shifter knob removed from uh, the truck. So we're gonna kinda use this as like a baseline of roughly it can be as tall as we want it to, but we're gonna make it roughly about as tall as this is. We'll use the micrometers and um, we'll measure that out and see what it is. You have a lot of play here. Like I said, you can go as tall as you want. Another thing we'll have to do is measure the threads, um, how long the threads are in the truck. So we'll have to do that um, uh, next, just to make sure that um, you can go, it's okay if we go too long, but you know, there's a certain um, length that we can't go. We have a little bit of play on the length of there. So um, yeah, we got this to kind of roughly get an idea of our height and how, how deep our threads are and we'll measure it on the truck. But um, I've got a piece of brass and that um, is chucked up in the lathe. that happened to have a scrap piece of brass that was roughly this, the, the diameter that I'm wanting to use for this project. So um, we're starting out with, with just a, a piece of round um, brass. So I think the first thing we need to do is face off this front so that we've got a nice flat surface to work from. And then um, we're gonna want to come in with our um, center tool and we'll, we'll drill in a little bit here and that will set our center. And then we'll come in with a, uh, I believe a 10.75 millimeter drill bit to um, bore this out. So when you're when you're tapping, I've got my tap here. Um, you can buy little thread checkers and figure out your pitch and everything, and then order, um, or you can research it online. Um, so I researched this online and found what the thread pattern was, and I ordered a um, a uh, uh, a tap for it. It's the name of this a tap. And so with that, you have to also know what drill bit. You can't just drill any size and this cut it out. There's a drill bit size that goes along with each tap. So a lot of times they're sold in pairs. It comes with the drill bit and it comes with the tap. 
Um, but in this case, I just bought the tap because I'd seen what size I needed on a drill bit and I had that drill bit size. So I saved a little bit of money by just buying the tap versus um, the little combo thing. So in most places like Home Depot and Lowe's and things like that sell uh, of most sizes. They, they have a good selection of them. So we'll use this to tap um, this hole once we drill it out um, internally and we'll have that drilled out internally and then we'll come in and we'll um, we'll tap that hole and then at this point it's, it will fit on the truck um, and you know you would leave it as a big long bar stock but we're gonna add a little bit of flair to it not getting too fancy because like I said this is kind of my first lathe project uh, like I said I had a little tiny one but this is a full-size lathe so we're gonna take it easy it's a simple first project so we'll probably come in um, profile wise and um, kind of take the edges down a little bit on each side put a bit of a chamfer there and then maybe come in with some like random we'll measure them out but some some cuts there that will then you know be spun around the whole part because it's a lathe just something simple um, kind of looks like a grenade and then of course like I said that'll be threaded and that'll screw on and then we'll have a little bit of cleanup process maybe with a scotch bright pad and uh, and it'll be kind of done we may darken these inside I, I can use a little bit of gun blue and darken the cutouts here and that may look kind of cool but let's cut over to the um, the lathe and let's get started okay now I want to mark my depth so I've come up with 60 millimeters that's just a random number there's it's not anything precise so I've got the tail of my uh, micrometer set to 60 millimeters just easier to get it in there and then I'm gonna come in with a sharpie and just make a, a reference point. This doesn't have to be exact. Maybe make a couple of them. And that's gonna let me know where I'm gonna stop. So now I can actually turn the lathe on and use the Sharpie as it's spinning as a, a marking point. Like All right, so we're gonna take our tail stock here and first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna lock it down so that it doesn't slide on us. So we got that locked down and then you can turn this handle here and it moves this um, centering bit um, towards um, your piece. Um, if you needed to lock that down, you can, um, but in this case, we don't need to lock this down. We're gonna leave it open because we're using this wheel to come in and just put a slight little um, dimple in there so that we can find a uh, center and switch out to our uh, drill bit. So let's fire the machine up and do that. Got a nice little uh, indentation in there. So let's switch out to the drill bit and we'll start drilling the hole and, and then tap it. All right, so we've got our our starting bit in our tailstock and we're ready to drill our hole. So w as far as the drill bit goes, uh, we want to slowly go up in size. We don't want to immediately go with our, our size um, right out of the gate, um, mainly because I have really long bits. They sell shorter bits, they're a little bit more stable. Um, but we're gonna slowly creep up on the size. I think in general, that's usually a good idea to do. Uh, that way, there's no risk of breaking a bit off into your work piece. So, um, we're not taking big bites. But the first thing we need to do is we establish that our depth of cut 
is 24 millimeters. So I set my calipers to 24 millimeters and roughly, it's, this isn't exact science. Uh, I lock them down and then I'm gonna take a piece of tape, any kind of tape works. And I'm gonna mark here, find out where 24 millimeters depth of cut on my bit is roughly. And then I'm gonna lay a piece of That way, I know how far in I need to go, and I don't really need to go further than that. I can go a little bit further, it's not the end of the world, but that's gonna give me a general idea. So, all right, let's um, get it close and fire up the... All right, so we've got our hole size drilled for our tap. Um, and I've never done this before. I've never tapped on a on a lathe. I figured I'd try it. We could take the workpiece out and do it in a vise uh, or even in the Bridgeport mill, but we're gonna try it here on the lathe. I've seen it done before. I've got a little stop mark there, um, but you don't power the machine on. Um, I believe the way this works is you lock the tail stock down and then um, push this in and then twist and then you just twist your um, and also buy the good taps don't buy the cheap ones it really makes a difference buying a you don't even have to be the highest end ones but you know i think you know what i'm talking about when it comes to buying cheap ones all right we bottomed out right there. Hey, we got threads in there. Thread me sideways. Okay, now we're going to face across the material and um, get it all to make sure that it's all, um, you know, the same uh, diameter. And if it's slightly off centered in the chuck, you know, I, I didn't put calipers on this and check for any kind of wobble and, and stuff like that. So I'm going to mill this uh, face down a little bit and that will ensure that everything's nice and even. Okay, so I've got, um, I've marked out with the calipers and then using the Sharpie method um, where my lines are that I'm gonna start cutting in my grooves. And I'm just using a V-bit here um, and that should cut my grooves in for me. And I'll try and make them consistent using my dial uh, on the, using my dials on the lathe to, uh, to cut those grooves in there. So we'll go nice and slow and I'll start um, cutting those in. Okay, I've got my grooves cut in there. Um, I think that looks pretty cool. Could probably go a little bit deeper, but I'm gonna put my chamfer on the side here first and see if I want to um, go deeper than that. All right, you can see I've got the chamfers and these cut in. They look pretty even to me. Um, Next, I think we need to do a bit of polishing on this. So I think I'm gonna start with a, maybe some 220 and then go to 400 and we'll see how that looks. Okay, I hit it with um, 220 and then, and I do that by holding, it's, it's a little dangerous, but the lathe is running and I'm holding the sandpaper like this and lightly pressing um, and I sand it that way. And you could make this as polished as you want. I think I'm just gonna keep it at like a matte finish for this, because I think it looks good. Because if I go shiny, it's just gonna quickly show scratches. So I'm gonna leave it um, kind of 
and I think I am gonna do black in between here. So uh, yeah, 220, 400 grit, and then a scotch bright pad. And that kind of evened everything up, but it is, it's looking good inside. So now what I've got set up is what's called a parting tool. And um, it's just a, a, like a, a stick that has a carbide thing on the end of it. Um, and then you push it into the piece and it'll cut your piece off. So that is the next thing that we are going to do. Okay, so I got the tool or the part um, cut off and I'm using a piece of scrap uh, sandpaper to, because it's got like that kind of rubbery backing on it to kind of help, I'm, I'm gently grabbing this and um, using it to help hopefully prevent from marring this soft brass up. Um, but pretty much we're almost done. We're just gonna put a little bit of chamfer on here and sand the end of it and that's pretty much it. Well, here it is. Um, I'm pretty happy with how it came out for my first project. Is it perfect? No, but it's way better than I expected it to be. Um, definitely should have put more tape um, and I may spend a little bit extra time um, getting like the jaws did leave a very, very small mark, but it's minor, nothing that can't get, get uh, that I can't get out with some uh, sandpaper, uh, like a 400 grit sandpaper. So maybe next time I would take a bolt and thread it in there since I already have a threaded slot and then grab onto that bolt versus trying to grab onto the piece or try more tape. Don't know, like I said, all new to this. Um, it's quite heavy, so who knows? I may go back in if, if that is an issue. It may not be an issue. Um, if, if it is an issue though, then um, I'll go back in and I'll do either more cuts or deeper cuts. I added this cut on the top um, and uh, I mean, and I'll do, I definitely probably will come back eventually and put a deeper chamfer on this. I just didn't quite have a tool um, that could do that much of a chamfer, but um, overall, um, very happy with that. So let's go, uh, let's go fit it on the truck and see how it looks. Now that it's all finished up, let's go see if it fits in the truck. Moment of truth. This thing is heavy. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't cause an issue of popping it out of gear or anything because of the weight. If, if not, like I said, I'll mill it back down. Sweet, that went on really, really well. Um, and that looks pretty awesome. Um, feels great. Uh, I just gotta give it a test drive, make sure there's no issues and the comfort, except I may put a, a bigger chamfer here on the on the edge here so it's not such a hard, hard corner and maybe a little bit more comfortable. But for my first lathe project, um, I'm pretty happy with that. So cool, I'm gonna give it a test drive and uh, we'll have some closing notes. All right, everyone, we finished this up. I'm uh, super happy with how it turned out. I learned a lot, it's my first uh, lathe project. So hopefully there's a lot more to come uh, with the lathe. I can keep growing and learning how to use it and incorporate it into some knife projects, some forging projects, It'd be super cool. Um, so yeah, I challenge you to get out there if you've got a lathe and uh, make your own little gear shifter if you drive a manual, because um, uh, it's a fun, fairly easy project to do um, and to learn different aspects of your lathe. So with that, Please subscribe to this channel and check me out on Instagram. I'll have everything linked down below. So keep making. Thanks for watching.